Hey, my name is Thomas and today I've got something really special for you. It's the Pentax LX, Pentax Mighty Flagship Camera from 1980. Remember that back in the 60s, Pentax was the number one SLR camera manufacturer of the world. And this camera was like the empire strikes back. But then things didn't really go as planned. And I'm going to tell you in this video why. I'm really thrilled again. Let's have a go. The Fantax LX came out in 1980 and it was produced until 2002. There are several variants of this camera, but most of them are really hard to distinguish. They changed a lot of the internals in that long production run. And uh, the only thing that you can really see from the outside is this different type of um, block around the shutter button. This is a really late camera. It was I think introduced in the mid 1990s. Details are a little bit unclear, but only the last generation LX cameras have this uh, style of shutter lock so that's easy to distinguish. They made around 200,000 of these cameras that doesn't sound little but on the other hand the Nikon F that was made in the same time frame also about 20 years uh, sold 750,000 which is almost four times as much. The Pentax LX was uh, camera for the professional market and also it's a piece of beauty you have to give it to that and um, everything feels super high quality and also it feels just very well designed in a way that a Nikon F3 for example doesn't really replicate. The Nikon F3 is more a tool like a hammer but this camera also they put some effort into making it nice and beautiful uh, kind of not only for the professional photographer, but also for wealthy, uh, high-ranking amateurs, so to speak. So, you've got all the usual elements, like shutter release with the lock. Again, this is the new version of the lock. Um, phone winding, this is the... This is also cool. You see all these embossed numbers on here? And the 1000, 2000, they just two, and then all these little dots. It just looks kind of classic in a way. So this is an aperture priority auto exposure camera. Um, also see that the shutter runs down to four full seconds in manual mode. And also keep in mind that all the fast shutter speeds, starting with flash sync, which is 75th of a second up to 2000, you can also operate all these if you don't have batteries. So we have a hybrid shutter in this camera. Super cool feature. The Nikon F3, for example, only has one single time uh, in uh, fully mechanical mode and it's 90th of second. But here you've got 75th to 2000th. You've got an interchangeable viewfinder, which again is a piece of beauty, but it's a bit locked. You press this, move it, and it's, you see it's a rail system. Also so much nicer than on the Nikons. Uh, the one downside is to exchange the focusing screen, you have to go through the mirror chamber like on the Pentax MX, and that's really a nightmare. Uh, the viewfinder has another cool feature, and I think it's the first. This camera was really innovative. You see that little screw here? It's your diopter adjustment. I'm not aware of any other camera from 1980 that has a diopter adjustment in the viewfinder. Um, here you've got your exposure compensation, which is locked with this little button. And also, again, embossed numbers, kind of fancy. And if you press this little thing, then you can adjust your ISO here, like this. Uh, I've got 100 ISO foam, but I always tend to overexpose a little bit, so I just set it to 80. But on the other hand, you could also go via this. Up to you. Uh, flash hot shoe, even though you've got interchangeable viewfinder, again, something that Nikon couldn't do in the F3. Um, and on the bottom, electric contacts for your motor drives or winders. Uh, also, this is for the winder connection. This is the button to rewind your phone. 
And here go your batteries. I think it's SR44, two, two of them. Or you can have these three volt blocks. Again, the camera works without batteries in the short shutter times, but of course then you don't have any metering. And on the front, we've got the famous Pentax K mount. Uh, so you can use every, almost every Pentax K lens. This is a classic Pentax K lens itself. Very good 28 3.5, but you can also use Pentax M lenses, Pentax A lenses, even the Pentax autofocus lenses. Uh, as long as they have an aperture ring, that's what you need. So that's it for the Pentax LX. A lot of features. Oh, and before I forget, this camera is weather sealed. Another first, in my opinion. Another big innovation. No one really paid attention at the time, but this camera has all the weather seals, you know, these rubber gaskets and stuff that you have today in your Sony cameras. You take it almost for granted. Pentax introduced that back in the 80s. Of course, we also got a surf timer here, and if you push it the other way, it's a depth of field preview button. Um, and here you've got two flash sync thingies, one for the electronic flash, and this one is for the bulb flash, I see. So if you want to use studio flash or anything, of course it can do it. And of course, we also got the mirror lockup. Press the button, move this. Now you can see also the pattern on the front shutter curtain, which is for the metering before you shoot. Press and it releases. One of the awesome features of the Pentax LX is the auto dynamic metering. That means the metering is built into the mirror chamber and the cell reads the metering of the shutter or off the film itself and auto dynamic means it just adjusts the shutter time during shooting to the correct value that means you can shoot long time exposures with no limit unless your batteries are exhausted maybe i shot this thing with eight minute exposures or even longer uh, just on automatic it's just like a bucket of light that collects every photon and when there is enough even after minutes or hours then it will close the shutter this is an awesome feature for long time metering. No other camera has that. Not even modern digital cameras can usually go longer than 30 seconds maybe. This camera, no limit. The only other cameras that have the same feature are of course Olympus OM2 and OM4. That was the last picture and now we have to change the film. It's really details that matter on this camera. Even the small button that you press to rewind your film has some sort of a protection around it. So you kind of press it with your finger nails. Mm, and listen to that. You see how it's counting reverse? No other camera has that. It's a feature. You could even rewind your film like to make double exposures or something. Since I'm using the scan service of the camera dealer in Cologne, I'm back to shooting color film as well because Scanning color film at home for me is a nightmare, but they have a really nice scanning service. Shout out for Camera Dealer. And no, this is not bait or anything. See the beautiful shutter. And this small thing, I think it's something for data imprint. Ah, oh, now it's catching on. Always check if this is uh, turning, then you know you did it correctly, ready to shoot. What I do love about all Pentax cameras and also the LX is it has a super precise feeling when you focus the 
the uh, split image and everything just top notch somehow feels even more precise than with an Olympus or Nikon camera I don't know why I always lose these uh, caps and they're pretty valuable. One of the big pluses of every Pentax camera is the lens selection. Yes, I know Nikon has an even bigger selection also on the used market today, but there are some real gems in Pentax lenses. So I love to use this with 50mm f1.4 Pentax M. My sample is just an awesome lens, also super compact and beautiful mechanics. And for wide angle, get the 28 f3.5 Pentax K. There's also an M version that's even smaller than this one. But this lens is oh so sharp. Maybe one of the sharpest 28mm classic lenses out there. Are highly, highly recommended. Uh, back to the big question, why didn't the Pentax LX become the huge success that Pentax maybe hoped for? In 1980 this was top-notch and it had a lot of innovation. Uh, Nikon just renewed their professional camera with the F3. Canon came in 1981 with the new F1. Those were also awesome options and the problem was back then Canon and Nikon already had a big market share on the professional market and Pentax was more the amateur brand and professionals are not just looking for one landmark super camera they're looking for the whole system and they're also looking for professional services it's just like today sony is a uh, really successful today in the professional market because they're really dedicated they put a lot of long-term commitment into that and people were maybe questioning if pentax would do the same back then and actually they were proven right there's a lot of beautiful Pentax lenses and everything, but it's still not a real match to the Nikon F system or Canon system. So that's the problem. And the camera was made for over 20 years uh, until 2001, 2002, just like the Nikon F3. But by that time, those manual focus cameras were more just um, prestigious amateur cameras so uh, when this last edition came out the one with a different uh, shutter thing here they were already made in very small numbers presumably only for the connoisseur as beautiful as the pentax lx is uh, it has two downsides and one is pretty severe the first one is the shutter sound is pretty noisy for what it is it's okay i mean this is not a practical or something but the camera as refined as that you would hope for a more subdued smooth shutter sound actually like the nikon f3 maybe which also is not really quiet but it sounds more beautiful than this more yeah more refined and the second issue is well you have to find a working one and that's quite a chore these days these cameras have a reliability problem so i got this camera from a friend many thanks he's a real collector he's got six different pentax lx cameras 
four of them don't work and those four are the older model they all have the same problem it's called the sticky mirror syndrome you can google for it um, and they also have another issue with focusing that's related so basically when the mirror rests there are some rubber pads where it rests on inside the mirror chamber and those can get sticky and then when you fire the shutter the mirror just won't free itself and it won't move upwards and also those rubber things can sort of deteriorate in a way that you get misfocused images if it's really severe then you try to focus on infinity but your focusing stops like maybe five meters or ten meters in front of you uh, then you know you've got the issue with the rubber stops there uh, it can be fixed yes but uh, the next big problem is if you give this camera to an overhaul the ceiling will be broken and there's no rubber seals available so many specialists won't service them anymore or if they do so then be aware that it's not officially weather sealed anymore maybe that doesn't matter so much the late version of the camera again the ones the really last ones that have this different uh, lock thing around the shutter they don't seem to have the sticky mirror syndrome so this camera works perfectly but again check before you buy uh fantax you can do it vertical like this two attachment points here um the reason is there's also a hand grip on this camera. If you don't use the hand grip, it will have another attachment point and then you can wear it like a normal camera. But actually I love the vertical style. It's a bit like Leica M5 style. Fantastic. This camera is highly customizable. There's a lot of different viewfinders like beautiful waist level finder. Uh, remember that metering everything works with any viewfinder again a contrast to nikon f2 and even f3 the problem is to find all these things they can be really rare so keep that in mind and then you have to pay a lot for a waist level finder for example and you've also got these beautiful hand grip things here this is more the standard version the camera also can be used without any hand grip and there's also a beautiful wooden one but again you have to search for these items the production numbers again are not so high on the Pentax LX and all these accessories that not everyone got in the new in the first place they can be rare Time for the verdict. Um, it's really hard to say anything negative about the Pentax LX when you're using it. It's just beautiful. I think this is like the climax of manual focus cameras in terms of design, in terms of features, in terms of user friendliness. Super, super refined, beautiful to look at. Also pretty lightweight and compared to a Nikon F3 or something. A lot of useful features. I really love shooting it, but it's also a bit like the Alfa Romeo of cameras. These things are temperamental. They need to be maintained well. Uh, there is the sticky mirror syndrome, so I always recommend to get the last version, even though they are even more rare. So it's maybe not your everyday camera. As a Pentax shooter, for example, myself, I just love the Pentax MX or even the ME Super. They're perfect companions for every day, super reliable and everything. And this is more something for a special day, for example, when you want to make use of that autodynamic feature for night shots. Uh, so a Sunday camera, so to say. So highly, highly recommended if you already have some other cameras in your stable, but not as your first Pentax camera. And that's it for today. I hope you found this interesting, maybe even useful. If you did so, then please leave a like, 
subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. It's a huge support and many, many thanks again for your support. If you've got any questions or comments, write something in the comment section below. I'd love to read all your comments. I will happily answer every single one of them. So have a great time, live long and prosper, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.